Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good. I know I have been MIA over these past few days, but if you follow me on the gram, then you already know. I have been busy. I've been down in Atlanta, and I had an awesome time this weekend. So I want to go ahead and shout out YFM Lucci for basically inviting Lovely TTV to his behind-the-scenes back-to-school drive. So like I told you guys a few months ago on my Instagram Live that one of the things I regretted was never like showcasing more positive stuff that um, Nipsey was doing, and then I also talked about it on YouTube Live that I want to, you know, have a fair balance. If we can talk about celebrities when they mess up or when they do, you know, ratchet crazy stuff, we should also be able to post when they are doing the right thing, when they are giving back to the community, the stuff that people don't see. And that's the one thing, unfortunately, that does not go viral. That's what the blogs don't talk about. So, you know, Lucci's people, they took me up on that and they invited me to come and basically watch what he does behind the scenes, you know, outside of, you know, the parties and the whole drama with Regine and everything else. He he is a really caring person. He really does give back to his community. So over the weekend, he did a back to school drive at his old high school. And so he gave away free backpacks, school supplies. He also invited a lot of other social media influencers. And they had a huge basketball game. The kids were there. They had a really fun time. My son was there. He got a chance to meet him as well. So this was really a dope event. It was really cool to see a celebrity go back to his old high school and give back to the community. And he says that he does this several times a year. So it's not just a one time thing. He's always always given back and got a chance to meet his mother and she was back there making nachos and hot dogs and food and stuff like that so Lucci definitely put his money where his mouth is and he definitely looked out for the community look at all and they so cute they got me all their bags Aww. So kudos to him. And, you know, if any other celebrity wants to show me a different side of themselves, make sure you hit me up and let me know. And I will be definitely down to film it and come through and everything else and to announce it on my platform. So thank you for giving Lovely TTV a chance. And thank you also for reposting our picture. I really appreciate it. We had a good time down there. ATL was cracking this weekend. I also stopped by Luda Weekend. He had a big celebrity bowling party and he also had a big basketball party. Um, and it was really awesome. I got a chance to meet a lot of people people really connect with people I got a chance to meet Dr. Salam so I definitely want to get a chance eventually to interview him as well so I had a great weekend so when I got home I was not feeling too good and I just need to rest so I just been resting these last few days okay but I've been on Instagram posting and keeping up with y'all so anyways one of the videos that people wanted me to talk about while I was in Atlanta I didn't get a chance to shoot it but people wanted me to talk about the whole Brandy and Monica situation okay so if you guys do not know super producer Dallas Austin, he was deciding to be a damn chatty patty this weekend, okay? So he did an interview with Vlad TV, and when I tell you Dallas Austin was spilling all this damn 90s tea, he was talking about boys to men, said they started feeling themselves, got really stuck up and funny acting, so much so that several members of boys to men were cussing out Dallas Austin on Twitter. So the member that cussed out Dallas Austin via social media um, was Nathan Morris from Boys to Men, and this is what Nathan had to say. He goes, at Dallas Austin, what the F is wrong with you, homie? Stay your ass out the woods, tree hugging and smoking weed and shit. You know your interview about boys to men with at Vlad TV was bullshit. I don't really do this social media shit, but I'll spew the real shit if you want, nigga. Don't do this to yourself. Honey, when I tell you, somebody was definitely in their damn feelings, okay? But that didn't stop Dallas Austin from continuing to spill some more damn 90s tea. Check this out. Um, but then he went on to talk about the whole situation with Brandy and Monica. And this situation was very, very interesting because I've always felt there was a lot of tension between the two, but we did not know where it stemmed from. And basically, Dallas Austin, honey, he spilled all the damn tea. Y'all go ahead and check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. You co-produced uh, Boy Is Mine yeah. between uh, Monica and Brandy because I guess there was some sort of lightweight beef between the two of them before he that? Heavyweight beef. <laughs> they got in a fight. Heavyweight beef, okay. <laughs> they, went to do the, they went to do, was it the AMAs or MTV? They went to do one of them. But Monica never liked Brandy, and Brandy never, you know, she was like, the, Monica's very ghetto when it came down to it. She was like, she's too proper, and she's too this. And I think Brandy might have looked at her a certain way a couple of times and looked at her like the little, you know. And so from that point, 
I was just like, they, you know, even to have them do the boys, my Monica was like, nope, not doing no song with her. I was like, ah, come on, you got to. It just makes the most sense. And Clive wants it, and you know, let's just do it. So we did the song. I did Monica stuff out here, and he did the Brandy's out there. And the first time they actually saw each other to do it was, I think it was American Musical was or something. And before they could even get to the stage, Monica decked her in the face, <laughs> popped in the face backstage. And I'm like, oh my God, this is even before the performance. So everybody's finding out how we're going to have a performance that looked like they're not you know, at war with each other, but it worked out because the song was supposed to be at war with each other, so nobody could really tell that she had punched in the face before the performance. Uh, um, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. So, <laughs> so they do a song together, and I think it's also kind of dope that uh, Roddy Jerkins, Dark Child, co-produced it, because yeah. he was Brandy's main producer. Yep. You know, so all the, all, you know, all the producers and all the, you know, the two producers and the two artists go and make this, this dope song, and even though they make the song, they, they never actually meet face to face or whatever. Even though the song becomes a hit, until that one day, until that that show. Uh huh. To this, to the okay. To the show, and the show was like earlier. It was you know, they they sang like I said, Monica song here and Brandy song out there, and the record came out and the whole nine, and, and even the video well, was well, all that. Why would they have a beef when they now have a hit song together? Because they just never did like each other in the first place, and it was like the hits. So it's like you know you have like you know you have plenty of bands like you know that that you can't stand each other and they've been the same band, um, and you can say yo why, how could you not stand each other? You got all these hits, just go sing the songs, you know. But they they were the epitome of no, and Monica was at the epitome of kind of just finding her real self. You know, she went through a lot of stuff, and uh, she was kind of the epitome of finding her real self. And her real self, if you didn't have gold teeth, she didn't like you. Um, so she, she was really, you know, hood in Atlanta, and she was, she just wasn't with it. Honey. All right, I wasn't ready for that 90s tea. He basically said that Monica, right before they went to go perform The Boy's Mind at the MTV uh, Music Awards, Monica decked Brandy in the face for no reason. It wasn't like Brandy stole her man, fucked her man, cussed her out. Monica basically punched her in the event Brandy thought about doing something or saying something slick. Now that's bogus as hell. That's not cool. That's not how you're supposed to carry yourself as a young woman. You don't attack somebody who's never done anything to you. So just let you know that a lot of things that go on in the industry, you know what I'm saying? Everything's not always pristine like we see it. And there's a lot of shady shit that goes on behind the scenes. And another thing I found really interesting is the fact that they never recorded The Boy Is Mine together. They were never in a studio together. They recorded on two different coasts and then the producers put it together, which is just insane because I always felt like something didn't gel about the video. Like there was like some real animosity. And this also goes back so if you guys remember back in 2016 when Brandy just started going off, she was snapping and she was basically calling Monica fake and people were shocked like what the hell is wrong with Brandy? Why is Brandy going off? Now it makes sense as to why Brandy has such an attitude towards Monica, okay? Because now what everything that Dallas Austin is saying is we remember uh, Monica was going on this tour. She was like, you know, on The View. She was on The Real and, you know, everything. She was like coming off really preachy and, you know, God this and God that. And Brandy basically called Monica fake fake so now it makes sense as to why brandy felt the way that she felt um mtv also decided to be messy and they also reposted the video of their performance so this entire situation is crazy i'm gonna go ahead and play you guys a snippet of their performance i'm also gonna go ahead and show you guys my flashback talking about this situation almost three years ago and how everything i was saying three years ago is kind of you know basically panning out to what dallas austin is saying now so y'all go ahead and check this out and i'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary And I just think that they're too old for this beef. I don't know what the shade is about. And I feel that, you know, with Brandy changing the lyrics, you know, it, it is kind of shady because why would you just not sing the song how the song is meant to be sung? But at the end of the day, we don't know what happens behind closed doors. I'm sure the reason that they're beefing or having issues, it probably stems from something. 
I wasn't there, honey, but I wish I was a fly on the wall so I can actually know what the hell damn happened. But being that I'm not a fly and I wasn't on the wall, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, it's between them. Sometimes, you know, people just don't like each other. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, wish them well and go your separate ways. Sometimes people are just not meant to be friends. I'm the queen of Atlanta, boo. The queen of Atlanta. I thought back to 2012 when they were on the cover of Ebony Magazine. I remember they were promoting their new music and everything else. I thought at that point in time they ended their rivalry and they were just going to be genuine friends. But it seems like that really didn't happen. And it seems like they just, you know, they've always kind of had an issue with each other. And I remember even thinking back to the Boys Mind video because that was one of my favorite songs back then. But I remember even thinking to myself as a little kid when I listened to that song, how come when they finally get together, they don't do a song, you know, more positive? Because at the end of the day, when they did The Boy's Mind, like I said, it's a good song, cool video. But when you think about it, it was still divisive. <laughs> Because then you still have to choose who sung better, who looked better, you know. It was just, they were got they got so picked apart in that video. And then you'd have the guy saying, well, if I was Mekhi Pfeiffer, I would go with Brandy, I would go with Monica. You know, it was just crazy why I felt like, you know, if they were going to come together and do a collaboration, it should have been a more positive collaboration. But, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, what's done is done. And they made their money off of that boy's mind. But it's just really sad that, you know, in 2016, they're still kind of going back and forth and not really so much Monica. Monica's been really positive about the whole situation, but more or less Brandy. And I don't know, you know, maybe some things happen behind closed doors after they try to be cool with each other again. You know, maybe Monica did something to her, you know, I don't know. But I just hope that whatever it is, they end up fixing it, you know, and if they can't be friends, they can at least be cordial and just take all the drama off of social media because they're both wonderful women. They're both wonderful singers. They're both wonderful mothers. They've done a lot and they've pioneered a lot in their own right. So to me, they, they paved the way for a lot of people in the industry, especially for a lot of black women. All right, so you guys just saw that flashback and you guys saw the performance. So this entire situation is insane. You know what I mean? It's crazy because I swear, y'all, some of these guys, honey, they talk more than damn females, okay? Between Dallas Austin and Choke No Joke, honey, they stay spilling all types of shit from the damn 90s. But you know what? I'm here for it, bitch, okay? So like I said... You know, I feel like, you know, it's really crazy that they didn't even work together. They didn't like each other. But this song spent 13 weeks on the billboard. And this song was a number one hit for both Brandy and Monica. And it's sad that they had so much tension and underlying beef. But it looks like a lot of this stemmed from Monica and not Brandy, you know. And like I told you guys before, I've met both of them. I met Brandy when I first moved to LA. She was so sweet, very sensitive, very down to earth. I met Monica years ago and she was just as cool. You know what I'm saying? But everybody knows Monica is a hood girl. You better bring Monica the same energy you want her to give you. If not, Monica will flip out on you. But both women are really cool. So hopefully they can, you know, let bygones be bygones. They don't have to be friends, but hopefully they still have a mutual respect for each other. But I think at this point, it makes more sense now as to why Brandy feels some type of way about Monica. If somebody punch you in your face when you did nothing to them at all you'd probably feel some type of way about their ass too okay like let's keep it all the way real okay so now in other celebrity news, if you guys do not know, LaShawn Daniel died yesterday, okay? LaShawn Daniel has written so many hits. Some of your most favorite pop songs, you know what I'm saying, R&B songs were written by LaShawn Daniel. If you guys don't know him as a writer, he was also Tamar and Vince's. They were like their best friend on the show, the Tamar and Vince show. Him and his wife, April, were Vince and uh, Tamar Braxton's best friends on the Tamar and Vince show. And so April basically came to announce that LaShawn died yesterday in a car accident in South Carolina. So he passed away at the age of 41. So you guys, life is just so short. You know what I'm saying? This man had it all, you know, Grammys under his belt, hit songs, money and everything else. And you know, he still passed away at 41 in a car accident. But I'm bringing him up to let you guys know that he's the one who wrote the song, The Boy Is Mine. So he wrote that song for Brandy and Monica. And it's just ironic that after this whole situation went viral a few days ago, now yesterday it's been announced that LaShawn 
John Daniels died. So rest in peace to him. My condolences to him in April. We've talked about them once or twice on this channel. And I've always liked him. I've always liked his wife. They've been very unproblematic. I even remember when the Tamarians were trying to find out, you know, who got Tamar fired from her job. And they were attacking LaShawn in April because by the end of it, LaShawn in April, they weren't as close with Tamar and Vince. And people started attacking his wife. And LaShawn was not here for it, honey. When I tell you, he got up. He defended his wife. He was like, in the name of Jesus, y'all would not bring that mess to our Instagram page. Let me go ahead and show you guys this sweet flashback of LaShawn defending his wife from the Tamartians. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Yo, check it out, everybody. What up? I'm at the Barclays Center. Y'all know I'm on this bad boy tour with Puff, you know, arranging all these vocals for all these artists. Now, check it. I hope y'all can hear me. And I don't do no foolishness, but just so y'all know, you know what I mean? Everybody hit me up about something that Tamar Braxton said. Just so we clear, my wife and I have nothing but love for the Herberts. But, you know, the social media thing is really getting out of control. She's not referring to myself or my wife. We have nothing to do with that. We moved on. We're getting our money. We're doing what we do. So God bless the Herberts. But I'm telling you, don't get ignorant with my wife. You know what I'm saying? I got Puff and everybody in the back waiting on me. But my wife comes before all of this. Please don't play yourself and please stay in your place. If y'all want to follow somebody reputable, y'all really should follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust me. But let's just keep it light, people. Please. Thank you. All right, so you guys just saw that video, and that's one of my favorite videos of him on social media because it just showed how much love and respect he had for his wife, you know, and I'm sure since then, him, Tamar, they've all made up, and, you know, it's water under a bridge, but, you know, I just feel really bad for April because they were truly a loving couple, so once again, my condolences to her and their entire family, so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping, you guys. Let me know your thoughts on everything. How do you guys feel about YFN and Lucci doing the back-to-school giveaway for the kids down in the ATL, and then how how do you guys feel about super producer Dallas Austin being hella chatty, honey, and spilling all this old 90s tea, all this drama between Monica and Brandy that nobody knew existed? People felt there was some tension, but nobody knew that Monica actually punched Brandy in the dang on face. And then how do you guys feel about LaShawn Daniels' untimely passing yesterday? Let me know your favorite song from LaShawn Daniel that he wrote and produced. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Don't forget to like, comment, rate, and subscribe, okay? We're trying to get to a million subscribers over here. So let's go ahead and get that done. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. How do you guys feel about all these stories? I got some more tea coming up, so stay tuned. All right, deuces.